pay a contract that you didn't pay for a rate you didn't choose. That is an effect of the tax. Just food for thought moving forward. Um, I'll end it there for now. I guess with one final thought. Yes, we pay the highest mill levy in Wyandotte County, and it's probably through systemic capital improvements where we don't really know how much money we're going to get in return. When we spend money, that we've got to ask ourselves, what's it going to cost for debt? What's it going to cost to service that debt? What's our debt moving forward? And what will it cost to service that debt moving forward? Zach and I had a discussion last, late last fall. We kind of roughly come up with the numbers. The debt service alone on Riverview project was $170,000. Was $170,000 a year. That would be two levies just to service the debt. Anymore. If there are none, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is to consider recommendation of approval from the Planning Commission regarding special use permit for communication tower at 725 South 4th Street and adopting resolution 2020-08 finalized. Good evening, Dave, Mayor, member of the Council. Uh, on June 1st, 2020, the applicant submitted a special use permit application for the use of the existing communication tower on the land located at 725 South 4th Street. The property is zoned to R2, medium density residential. The tower and support structure that are currently there are not in service. They haven't been in service in quite a long time. Um, the applicant is in the process of purchasing the property from the Wyandotte County Land Bank and has submitted information related to placing the communications tower back into service, and that's part of the application materials that you have before you tonight. The sale and purchase of the property was approved by the UG on July 30th of 2020, so not too long ago, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, on July 15th, the Planning Commission held a public hearing in regard to the item. City staff and the applicant spoke at the public hearing, and one other citizen spoke at the public hearing as well. They inquired about whether the existing tower and equipment area would be expanded. As you'll see when I get to the conditions, one of the conditions is that it cannot be expanded. So um, that, that item is being addressed. So there were no specific objections to the proposed use um, that were voiced in the public hearing, and we've received no protest on this item. The Planning Commission, after hearing the item, uh, recommends approval of the special use permit with the conditions that are in the attached resolution that's at the end of your packet for this item. There are seven conditions there. I'm not going to read each one of those necessarily. If you have questions about those seven conditions, you can let me know. I do not hope the applicant is present there. I think so. I didn't see it there. So. Um, with that, I'll stand for any questions. Dave, I think the question I would have is that tower, since it's been abandoned for so long, is it a safe structure? They had a structural, the applicant had a structural uh, inspection done of it, and it is safe for the use that's proposed. So it's my understanding. Mm -hmm. Any questions? What, what is the intended service area for the, the end product? I'm going to let the applicant speak to that. It's not a huge service area because it's limited by topography and some other things because of the height of the tower itself. But I'll let the applicant go ahead and speak to that. That's okay. Fred Ricketts, Edwardsville. The service area is basically the lower Edwardsville area. Everything off of that shelf, about up the bar, about up to the bridge, that's the main area. I could two step at the monitor to say words out and they need something over there, but right now that's the service area. There's, there's a fair amount of, uh, uh, pro, I'm guessing, potential homes that could use such a service. But the service is intended to be a super low cost, low speed internet. You know, to have something. Instead of going to McDonald's, I see a lot of the, the kids going to McDonald's. So to do the homework. You talk about the shelf, are you talking about like where the mayor's house is? <laughs> way up the hill. Uh, well, the, 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 that top of that antenna is about not too much higher than that hill. So up the hill, there's a lot of trees on that hill. So if you can not have trees all the way up to the top of the hill, you can get it. 
and you could go over if they need a repeater. There's, there's an area up there for a repeater if you want to go over there. Not as, as, not as many households up there. Right. <coughs> Would um, you include all of Williamson Farms? Um, I don't know. Where does, where does that end at? Where's the where That's on 4th so if you go up 4th Street, uh, the, it's still kind of on the lower. Is that the newer one? Yes. yes. Yeah, I can see quite a bit of that, actually. Okay. Um, if there was no trees, I could see all of them. So we could always do some repeaters if somebody needs it. The higher the dollar in the household, the less they need it until they get to a higher one, and then it's a nice backup. It's cheap enough to have a backup, so you're, when your fish goes out, you still have something. When you talk about repeaters, is that something that's on each individual house? Or? No, it would be an area that would, an area designated that would be agreed upon by everybody at one place with bounce it around corners and then it would supply. Like a pole, something? Uh huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. They have, and it's a little hard to read, but I think if someone was good to make a reference, in the packet, uh, about five pages from the back, there's a kind of a graph that says airway. What he's basically what he's done is he's gone from uh, kind of the north part of the city uh, and, and come down to the tower and kind of gives you a cross section view of the terrain. And, and you know, that doesn't necessarily mean you can hit all those areas again because of the trees and other, you know, if you're down in one of these valleys, you're not, you know, it's a line of sight, but that kind of gives you. Uh, somewhat of an idea of why you can hit that lower area pretty easy as you get farther out towards, you know, roughly up towards Kansas Avenue or in, in that area, uh, depending on where you're at, it's going to get harder. I mean, one, the signal straight, but two, you got hills and back. So my house down at the bottom of the valley, there's a lot of trees around it. Uh, I just was a little confused with the cone. The cone goes way over to sure. the racetrack. Sure. Well, the rest track quite a bit higher than the than the Kansas Avenue. There are some high spots over there. You actually can get to it over there. You cannot get to it down on the back side of those hills, which is almost all of it until you go over over right seventy and it comes up. So it could could actually shoot over there uh, and get some of the spots. If they're pretty way like it like that, the, the less trees need. It looks like there's uh, some landscaping and the conditions. Well, right now it's kind of an eyesore from yes. before you, you acquired it. Um, will that improve yes. the, the condition of this? Yes, the main thing that the landscape is going to be is it will clean it up for one thing. Clean the trees that have been cut for 15 years or so, and then the, uh, uh, either a six or an eight foot cedar, foot cedar fence around the chain link fence right now. Now, hide, clear up probably quarter of the way up the little shed and then I'll probably be painting the shed and plugging the holes and fixing the lock and adding some chairs or, or stairs. And then since it's a special use permit, is that one that will need renewed? This one will not need to be renewed. This would be a permanent uh, special use permit, but it would run with the owner. So okay. if he ever sold the operation or the tower to somebody else as a business, it would have to come in and be re-reviewed because it would be under new. So it's with the land and the current applicant. Sold or leased? Um, yes, it, it, it's really, it's kind of like Outfield Brewery when we had that discussion where the management changes or the ownership group changes or something changes in that operational setting. Yes. It, so I was reading in the, I can give this project plan that was, and it says uh, three megabyte service for 14.95 and Six for twenty-four and five. Is that pretty low? Is yeah. that? I mean, it's low speed, it's low uh, cost. You can, you can buy. You can. You can to like run VPN or something. If you need a minimum of like twenty-five. Oh no, no, no. You've been sold a misnomer. Huh? I, you've been sold a misnomer. You can no, buy box old I have. <laughs> well, the, the cable companies are trying to sell it. I have three megabits at my house, right across from, right, right down from Chuck's. And had that for three years, and you run everything you want. Now, you can't do gaming. If you're a gamer, you, this is not for you. You can do uh, Netflix, any streaming, one channel, one TV, uh, and any Zoom, any, any, any of those. Zoom doesn't get over a megabit. 
you can do a full tilt zoom with 100 people on it and stay under a megabit. Uh, you can get a 1080p resolution on your TV at about 2 megabit. And most of the Netflix channels are set either 720 or uh, uh, 1080. It kind of depends on how they were coded. So you can, I've, got, I've got a little website that I show some of that demonstration that shows you don't need 100, 100 megs, 25 megs. Well, I hope at that price point that there are a lot of citizens in this area that are, will be able to take advantage of that. And yep. I, ho I, I hope that that, that uh, allows them to have, now, if they don't have uh, internet. I had there. so many people stop me when I was cleaning the vines off of that thing and were asking, and the word of mouth was already spreading about, you know, what are you doing? You know, internet is cheap. And uh, tell them that they can do that and have enough uh, bandwidth for, for a streaming service and stuff. And it's fabulous. You know, they, they want to help out clean, help clean. And oh, when you're talking about the, the shooting the repeater uh, up north, is that kind of like a like a nano beam type thing? That uh -huh. it, it is. Uh -huh. Okay. Basically, it's a little dish, right? That big, on both ends. So if you had a structure that was high enough on the north end that had a line of sight, because I mean you're probably talking about something that I mean it at least has a nine or ten mile point right. of sight. Oh, yeah, I'm going from, from uh, the source, the back hall is in KC Mo. Okay, so, I'm going so you'd be able to nano beam it up uh -huh. to a spot yeah. on the north. If you're at the top of the hill, I can get Chuck's house from there. Okay, great. I wish you luck. Appreciate <laughs> when, it. When do you plan on being operational? Well, it's kind of a money thing. It's a one-man band, so uh, if everything stays inexpensive, I don't get too many things. I've passed out all my milestones and stuff. I have a lot of equipment. Um, there's going to be, in that little sheet, there's a little kind of a thing, a to-do list. And one of them is, is, you know, I need to get a couple of, of people to do some testing with. I need to do some beta testers, get that set up. I need profiles of the routes and see where the strong spots are in the park, where the weak spots are, kind of do a, a real accurate profile. And then uh, once that gets going, we need to set up the uh, all the management software, I've got software that manages all the radios. And we have all that lined up, lined out. It's just a matter of uh, buying the equipment. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that. We're going to either lease the equipment, the customer will lease the equipment, lease to own, or or purchase out. Uh, try to make it as easy as possible. And that kind of depends a little bit on my cash out my own up front. Don't be the, the twenty four ninety five or whatever it is plus the equipment rental. Plus, plus if you want to rent it, you can buy it, you can rent it home, or you can just lease. It. Okay. And I'm I'm trying to keep the lease at about three dollars a month. And, and I don't know if you guys have anything to do with it, but uh, uh, making the taxes on that piece of property cheaper would be highly appreciated. The, the, it's not a high revenue. Uh, uh, entity, and that seems to be one of the biggest uh, uh, elements in the room right now, which is next. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we issue a special use permit for 725 South 4th Street. Just that is 2020-03-SUP. I guess that's the case number. It'd be resolution 2020-08. 08? Yes, is the resolution number. It's just resolution. 2028. Okay. Oh, second. It has been moved and second to approve the uh, resolution for um, or to approve, or approve the planning commission's recommendation for personal use permit for the address of 725 South <coughs> Forest Street adopting resolution 2020-08. Would the clerk please call roll? Just for clarification with all of the stipulations issued by the planning commission. Recommendations issued by the planning commission. Yeah. All seven of those conditions are in the rest of the For clarification. Adams? Yes. Kahar? Yes. Malott? Yes. Shriver? Yes. Stein? Yes. McTaggart? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, well, sure, we'll entertain a motion to go into recess in the executive session. Um, until 8 o'clock.
the city council recession the executive session pursuant to KSA 7543 19 b2 for consultation with legal counsel regarding information that would be deemed privileged in the attorney client relationship with the village south of Edwardsville project with the open meeting to resume in the city council chamber at 8 o'clock. Second. Would the clerk please call roll? Adams? Yes. KR? Yes. Malott? Yes. Shriver? Yes. Stike? Yes.
everything from testing to contact tracing to uh, anything related to kind of the public health department's operations. Uh, we then set aside uh, on hundred dollars per person. So if you take the two twenty six, right? We're buying the way at hundred dollars per person. Uh, so a population based formula for cities of Bonner Springs, Edwardsville, Kansas City, Kansas. The, the group collectively authorized, also authorized about $9 per county resident for county functions to be funded. And the remaining money, money was spent for uh, nonprofits, education, uh, some, there really wasn't any business applications. Uh, and they may have funding in the next two rounds. Out of all of that, uh, the city had submitted, uh, we, we were asked to submit projects uh, for funding, and we initially submitted projects, all of which are listed on the attachment, that total, uh, in total, uh, $926,678 in CARE Act funding, which included $163,788 in reimbursed costs. Reimbursed costs include things from when we have to have a medical personnel at our court taking temperatures and health checks, uh, those types of things. If, if we, and we did have individuals that were out because of COVID, either uh, individually or a family member, we had to hire overtime, bring in additional staff. Uh, the uh, decision that we made early on that we kept all of our employees whole. In other words, why we Right, we needed to separate some people home and change up shifts. That had an impact potentially on their income. Uh, so we, we made all that whole. And then PPEs and all the other types of products that we bought. In addition to that, we then submitted this list of projects that you see attached uh, that we've talked about before. Uh, mainly they focus on uh, remote access, uh, accessibility to government, the ability of workers to work whether from home or remote sites. Uh, there was some money kind of around broadband, the broadband initiative. Uh, there were some court safety upgrades that we, some we've already done, some we're still need to do. Uh, uh, we had an outdoor space that we were looking at to take our community center and add some outdoor space around it. So, you're in court, you don't have to put 200 people inside a building. Uh, we had testing, we have a site with testing, curve, vaccinations, etc. cetera. Um, public messaging, and I'll come back to that one in a minute, and then some modifications in the PD to help uh, maintain those separations there, and some UV sterilization that would be used primarily by the fire department for ambulances. At the end of the day, like I said, we finally came to a formula that said, okay, we're just going to give to the cities this amount of money based on their population. And they used a, a 2018 census update number, which is the same number that the state used. So we're all on that, that same basis. Uh, and that's how we got to the 449, I think, yeah, I may have it wrong, I think it's 449, 449, I think that's So basically 4,494 people is what they showed the residential population count and you got a hundred dollars per person so now the government yes sir. now they got kck one well, got a hundred and nine dollars effectively yes effectively they because the government received they the took on nine more dollars of yes. county okay yes now i will say and, and again i believe that when you have a group the group makes a decision at the end of the day, right, and, 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 and ultimately I voted uh, basically as a representative of that part. Uh, my position was, and I think a few others had the same position, that said we have three governmental entities in this county. Unified Government of Wyandotte County, Kansas, and Kansas, the City of Bonner Springs, the City of Edwardsville, the funds should be allocated among those three, whatever amount of money, and that those, those agencies then, those elected bodies could choose how they wish to Person. So, you know, if we want to disperse all of ours to build the playground and that's accept, you know, that's allowed under the act, that's our decision to make. And if I have to make one of the decisions, they made So, uh, 
Uh, but at the end of the day, that's not how the application format went. Uh, and so there was a, a slide part for the county. Uh, and I think their argument is there are certain county functions that everybody benefits from, and and there should be set aside. That that was the point. Of the was the last uh, check. We pay our county taxes. Yes. So, mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, so that, that's how the format broke down. Uh, and so uh, today, probably at the same time, if not already done, the, the process is the unified government as the grant recipient, whatever subrecipient, has to submit to the state of Kansas a plan by August the 15th. And tonight is the meeting by which the unified government is doing that, uh, putting all the various pieces together, package it in a plan, send it to the state. The state will then, uh, there's a Thing called the Sparks Committee, which is, is basically government, but I think the governor appoints the members of that committee, uh, and they will review from all the counties and basically say this is if something's not acceptable, we don't accept your plan or some part. Uh, so, end of the day, when that's done, then checks will be submitted first to the county, and the county or some recipient would send us effectively. Uh, a check for $449,400. Uh, our plan at this point is the, which was built into your budget presentation tonight, is the $163,788 would go into the general fund to offset those expenses we've already spent. The remainder of the money would be placed into a separate grant fund, something that actually can account for outside of the tax funds. Uh, and these projects would then be funded out of that fund for the amounts that we show. Now you could have you could have one project that spends a little bit more and some less. At the end of the day we have to submit two reports, uh, the last one on December 31st. So all funds have to be expended by the by December 30th. By expended that means you have basically received the, the project the product or project. It is complete and usable. Uh, you may get an invoice in January that you pay in February. That's acceptable, but I can't enter into a contract for work to be done in February, March, and April, but, but enter into it in, say, October. So the money's happening. Mike, I have a question. Yes. question. How many voting participants were there? I believe there were nine. Uh, I'm trying to so we had the three commissioners, uh, the director of public health, uh, Assistant City Manager uh, Alan House. Um, I'm missing somebody in that. Miss um, uh, Mahoney, who is the mayor's very well staff. Um, Crystal Sprague. Yeah, she wasn't a voting member. Oh. She was she, uh, myself in the Bonner Springs. I feel like I'm missing somebody. So there were there were from Bonner and Edwardsville. One each. There was. Two, yes, out of nine. So we didn't have uh, eight or nine. a shot at ever getting a fair shake in this because I mean, who that that those folks are going to vote for? <coughs> well, I I I, I'm gonna, uh, I I will say that. So I think there was uh, I think there was good discussion about that. So uh, I mean, we moved from a lot of places. You know, it moved on spectrum. I'll give you an example is at the, the last set of group we looked at was nonprofits. And within the nonprofit group, and I can't tell you why it was there, but the Board of Public Utilities, uh, which at least the position I said was, well, they're really a department of the Unified Government. They were founded me, right? They were created by, I realized they have a separate governing body, but, but they're still subject to the Unified Government, uh, you know, so on and so forth. And I will say several, I think all three of the commissioners actually took that same position and said, this should come out of the Unified Government Funds, this is a department, not any different than the city of Edmonton has a sewer department or right. Bonner Springs has a water suit. So I would, I, I would say that there, there was good discussion around that. I think there was, uh, you know, did we get everything we wanted? No. Did everybody get everything they wanted? No. I mean, there was a proposal. Uh, really put forth by Bonner Springs. I, I disagree with it, uh, where they basically said if it's $226 per person, take out the $2.80 from the 
administrative costs, which there's going to be, send the other $222.20 to us. For, uh, for your and, population. And then, and then you right. decide what you what you want to do. That's right. Of course, the argument came in, well, that's not fair to the editors. And, and I'm, just, I'm just reiterating the discussion. But there were, I would just say, well, to the unified government, because then they would feel that they were getting the last. Because they still had to fund they still had to fund public health out of their numbers, and they still had to fund the nonprofits and the education institution. That, that. So that, that you know, we weren't we weren't contributing to any of those. Now we can have all kinds of arguments whether or not we think we should. I will tell you, out of the nonprofit applications, there was only one that had a address within Bonner and Edwardsville. Not to say some of those others weren't similar areas. Uh, and it wasn't ultimately funded, and I, 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 it, it wasn't providing direct service. I'll just say that. I don't want to get into, but but I don't think they were really providing some direct service. It was more uh, recovery of lost income, which while permissible, is wasn't really the committee's thought. I mean, I think the committee's primary number one was getting the city's whole for expenses they already had. Number two was direct public health services, right? Making sure we have testing, making sure we do contract tracing, making sure we're, we're doing the public health pieces. Uh, and kind of three through, and then really three through five, but probably the next priority was funding nonprofits that were providing direct services, right? I have a nonprofit, I, 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 I have and I'm going to provide food. I'm going to provide uh, utility assistance. I'm going to provide housing. Was this particular nonprofit one that provided direct services? No. They did not. Yeah. Um, I took a so that's, that's where we're at. So. The article that was posted by um, Wine.Daily, so it wasn't from the UG website, but I just I thought it was enlightening, um, and it kind of just goes right along with everything else that we've experienced in the last few months. Um, so they turned down our request for a broadband initiative for 25000 they turned down a learning lab for 34100 that would have helped our students who um, a lot of them are having if I, if I may just say this because I, I so these so they didn't they didn't the UG didn't turn down individual this is our internally staff request saying with the limited dollars we have this is all and we if have. we want to change them we certainly can we right. had to have a recommendation to them and it's subject to change if we change we're saying we think some of these other items in this particular case have higher priorities for right. I'll, I'll get to it. Okay. So the 34,100 could easily be made up where, where, we'll, talk, where we'll get here in just a little bit. Um, $40,000 for lobby modifications. If you look through the expenses that they justified for the UG for all the building modifications, the technology modifications, um, for heaven's sakes, the um, admin fees for just their CARES Act response team, who are people who are already employed within the UG, $453,000. Um, if you look at, so we're getting $449,400 for our whole city of Edwardsville. They're proposing $900,000 to the community college. That's over twice what our entire city's getting. Now, they also have broken down their fire departments getting money on top of that, their police departments getting money on top of that. Our police and fire are going to get reimbursed within our 449000 that we got half of what community college is getting. When we look at, and this is what I was referring to as far as the school district, um, Edwardsville School District, Edwardsville and Bonner Springs School District um, is getting $56,000. Bonner or Piper School District, who has less students enrolled between kindergarten and 12th grade, $380,000. And here's help, not you, Mike. Uh, they are telling us they can throw in an extra thirty-four thousand dollars. Our kids had internet down here. It's unexcusable, and and I appreciate that it could have been a whole lot worse if you weren't there. And I, I so appreciate that you were there, but I don't think we got a fair shake on it. Um, one more one more thing. I and there there is a ton of numbers. It was um, pages and pages long. Uh, UG Parks and Recreation. $2.8 million for a filtration system for the community centers, public circulation area units, restroom filtration, resurfacing trails for social distancing, um, safer route to increase social distancing, 
sanitation practices, sanitation utility truck, must be a really nice truck, um, vehicles to reach public areas, $2.86 million, and they couldn't give us more than that to take care of our entire city. And I doubt we'll see one penny of the $2,866,000 at our city park that will potentially need to do these updates for safety and cleaning as well. I'm kind of out of words on it. I just, I, I don't think it's right. I emailed every single one of the commissioners um, tonight before their meeting because their meeting was scheduled during ours, obviously. Um, <coughs> I feel like it's time to prepare or to think about on the on the road a future vision and what we need to do to make sure our city has a voice and more than a voice but a vote um, to balance things out because we're way we're way out of line right now. Let me just note so so if you if at the full two twenty six right so if it was two hundred twenty six dollars which again that was the allocation by the state right. So had we got at 226, it would have been slightly more than a million dollars. I think it was a million fifteen thousand something. So just to give you that. So less than they've allotted just for the person, right? Yes. Okay. I'm just saying my, and I will say I made this argument and I still think this is the problem with this formula, right? It's based on population. But our our police department and our fire department our park, I mean, right? We were out there mowing grass so people could use our trail. Our police and fire still had to go to the calls, right? Uh, just, just because we may be quote small doesn't mean we don't have the same needs and and, 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 and issues and items that, that come up. And so, because population, we're not a large population city, but we're not we're not designed to be a large population. But those those. 15,000 vehicles that drive down K32 every day, or there's 4,000 plus people that come into the city every day, or there's, you know, 50 to 60,000 vehicles that drive on, on 435 and I-70. We're engaged with all of that every single day. So I will say, and I raised it a number of times, and, and again, I'm going to say this because I thought that the discussions were, were, were they were professional, right, uh, people I think allocated for their positions. So I, I think in the whole, the committee had a pretty big task to try to figure out how to do something equitable. It wasn't easy. I mean, I was up, you know, not, not quite, I was up one night because we need to have scoring on certain things. You know, I finished them at 1230 at night, you know, last Wednesday night for a Thursday morning meeting or whatever. That's fine. I mean, I, I was on that committee. That's my responsibility to do it. But I, there was a lot of you know, different opinions, politely so, right? you know, should we fund more nonprofits? Should we fund education at all? Uh, you know, we had, we had prior, I mean, KU was a big one. I mean, they, I think one of their applications was $7 million, but they've gotten $70 million already in CARES Act, and several people are saying, well, wait a second. I mean, as a hospital, you have access to funds that, that we don't have. I mean, we had one application for doing a clean air study from Lawrence, you know, I mean, we all win. No, I mean, I don't even know how. I mean, okay, clean air is important. Don't get me wrong, but how is that? You know, the, the primary purpose, in, in, I believe, I think, what I've heard here, this is for response and recovery to this specific pandemic. What are we doing to respond to this, recover from this, and and really be prepared for what? This may be going longer than we think and that's what I was in the future. Right. Prepared for it, right. the, the learning and the things that I think were great that you had yeah. included in our budget. I feel like what you turned in was minimal yeah. and it was reasonable, yeah. and then cutting it in half was not. And I am thankful that you were there because that knows what you would walk away with if you were not. Well, we should have not when it, we should have had a commissioner from that represented Bonner and Edwardsville either the at-large one or the, you know, the one that represents both on that committee. I mean, I, and I agree, it goes right back to what we've been saying for the last two months. Our representation at the unified government level is nil. It, 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 it's non-existent. Um, and it, it's, I agree with Carolyn, it is 
we need to be thinking about how we fix this. Whether it's, I've got a lot of different ideas. I don't know if they're possible, but we've got to we've got to get it fixed. Okay. Um, and and I, I there's also, another package going to probably come about yeah. here before too long. Yeah, the second and, phase is coming out. I think. And it's and I it think better so. be. We better make sure that it's um, we're represented properly. And, and it has a very some people that are it has some component for public health. That's like two hundred. I think why not tag maybe two hundred thirty-two thousand. All it's public health. I think it's going to be more focused on education, the education sector, so to speak. I, I will say this: I think y'all's voices uh, relative to us being on that committee, y'all speaking up as you have in the past, because initially we we were not on that committee. I mean, I I I I. I I believe there was at least one member on that committee that said, why don't we have representatives? Uh, I, initially, I was appointed, and then later they appointed Bonner. I think initially it was like a lab. one from Von Redfield. Uh, they said, well, you know, why does Mike get to be on the committee? No, no, no. That, that, that's not my thing, box. But uh, at the end of the day, I mean, we have to justify the money that we have. Now, I will say this. The, the way the, the, the way the, the statute, the federal statute is written is any cost directly, basically all pay and benefits associated with public health or public safety are considered basic, basically they say those were essential costs, right? So in theory, you could take and say, well, we're going to apply 100% of the money to our public safety benefits, right? I don't think that was the purpose of what it was, but, but in theory, and we have about $3.1 million in pay benefits in public safety, we could easily say, there you go, right? And, and um, you know, different cities took a little bit of a different approach. You know, I think what we did, and, and I think there was, I think they appreciated it. And, I asked our department heads, I mean, saying, okay, a million dollars was the max we were going to, I mean, right, was going to be the max we were going to get. Please come forward with projects that we can get done in this time frame, and that will help us to respond, recover, and be prepared for the next thing. I think they did a, a, a great job of packaging things together that is what is going to be submitted previously and then revised. And again, I think Mr. Morrow still said it back here. He was our point of contact, did an exceptional job. Uh, Zach certainly assisted with him on our presentation. At the end of the day, uh, you know, this is what we've submitted uh, for the funding that we have at hand. Uh, it will probably be at least 30 days before we actually see any funds, uh, which then means we basically have 90 days to implement the project. Certainly, we're already making steps to get them. If there's any of those you feel, uh, you know, you, you feel like we should do something else for in, in there, that's fine. Again, what we try to do is say, how can the public access their government, right? And, and, and if we have to go remote again, how do we, so we found that, you know, you, you've seen it among the council, right? So we go to remote meetings and everybody has different computer set up to try to get in and we don't have any way to have, you know, for putting a, a phone up here for, for meetings and, you know, being able for the public to be able to engage, not just watch, but engage their, their government is important. Our ability to be able to continue to operate no matter where we're at, you know, and whether it's this emergency or some future one, but right, we're, we're dealing with it. So that's why we focused on those. And then most of the rest of them are really around safety, right? Uh, main, maintaining safety for the public and maintaining safety for our people. Now I do want to say uh, the public messaging. So the initial public messaging request that we put in was effectively for two portable, uh, the portable type message center that, uh, you, you know, somewhat higher in. I mean, I'm talking about, but we put messages on there. 
and you could also, uh, you know, it can operate 24 hours a day, uh, and you, you could get other, other pieces with it, track accounts, those kind of things. Uh, we, we obviously cut that one down. Uh, we took out the, the lot modifications for PD. We, we can somewhat structure that, but as we said, we have an area where we take reports and all that, and just open to the public so somebody comes in. But the biggest area where we have the biggest concern probably public safety is you, know, you bring a prisoner into that building and and there's no way to kind of segment them in there right now. We have a chain of events that kind of put in that area, but that has all kinds of problems not from you know somebody spitting or doing other things, right? So uh, we we try to focus on how we can communicate and how we can maintain safety for our staff. And like that. So when we started cutting, that's kind of the, the vein that I used to say, okay, these are the things that we can afford within these dollars. And, and now, again, some of these might come in and over or under in, in the total dollar amounts. So we'll, you know, we, we have, you know, we have less than uh, 10 days, but maybe even less to like, okay, tell us all your projects. We, we could have submitted five million dollars for the project, but they weren't going to get funded. And, and how much time do you spend for something you don't, you know, you don't have a reason? So again, it's really a report. There's no action. Uh, it is before the unified government. They'll take everybody, package it together, ship it, and then uh, you know, if there's something in here that the state determines is not an eligible extension, I don't believe there's anything in ours that should come to even close to. That. Do you know, did the Bonner representative, did they kind of feel the same way that we're expressing our feelings? I think yes. I mean, I, I mean, obviously he was, as I did, but, you know. And he, who was, did you say it was? Uh, no. uh, uh, his okay. name okay. was Matthew. Uh, uh, no, he's, he's the assistant to the city manager. Okay. He, I'm not sure how the selection was. Ultimately, it was the chairperson. Made that was Mark. We obviously said who could be on the committee, I guess. And so I received a call from the county administrator saying, Would you be willing to serve on this committee? Uh, if so, I'll make a recommendation because Mark Lee, that was like at 10 in the morning and then I'd be at 3 in the afternoon. So I said, Yes, and send me the, send me the sign on stuff. At 2 30, I got the sign on stuff and I was on the meeting at 3. So uh, again, I, I think those boys. Made them go. Maybe we. How, how do we make sure we have more inclusiveness? And, and and I think both cities said that you know that's the important part. What, what's what's the voice in this process? There was also discussions in the mayor's on this call. We have a twice a week call uh, that's hosted by the by the by, by the administrator, but but the mayor's there too. The mayor's you know on what's going on with this price and how many cases are there? What are the trends? You know who. Are, What's the hospital static? So it has all the cities, all the school districts, uh, the colleges, Donnelly College, Community College, uh, uh, the elected representatives at the national level, the staffing from our house representatives, our two senators. So it's kind of a broad, more of a broad scope that we've been on since the very beginning. It was every day, and now it's a twice a week. And so myself, the mayor, and the staff are particularly on this call. I, I think the mayor made every single one of them. Yes, Mr. Cunningham, yeah. but, but he's been on every single one. And, and those same discussions happen of, hey, how do we, if this is supposed to be a public process, which there are certain things in the adopting resolution about public process, how do we have voice in that? How, where, where's the voice of all the public? And so I, I think those same concerns were raised and have been raised to the party continuum. Well, I think it for sure needs to be raised at least. Uh, by everybody here and to at least mm -hmm. our two commissioners that represent us. Okay. Anyways, there's, yes. there's going to be two more rounds. Yes. My understanding, you have a, a time frame on the rounds? I don't think they've set number three. I think the rules for number two are coming out by the 15th okay. of August. Right, I understand right now. They, they've kind of broken it down. Uh, one, The one area where they, they couldn't come to consensus, I don't have to break it was on broadband for $60 million, and they couldn't seem to come to consensus on that. Um, 
How many households do we have? Uh, about 1,100 individual households. Uh, something you might want to consider in the second round is uh, a subsidy for those 1,100 to hook up to Mr. Ricketts. Yeah. Um, I like to plan so that so that the kids have access to internet in school and parents have emergency access they can they can do their zooming and everything because we have had complaints yeah. from parts of town that cannot do not have access to that so possibly some subsidies for our residents um, for maybe get a faster startup on that project um, and it's going to be right so so broadband right high speed broadband is considered 25 mega and I, I understand it's different and i don't know how they're, I don't know how they're going to allocate we don't have that yeah. kind of access but, but we've got we've got somebody that stepped up to the plate and wants yeah. to do something for the city right. and i think we need to get behind it and support it and mostly what we're doing is supporting our citizens right. and giving their and our students access to an education if this is the way they're going to play the game from this way forward and i guarantee you we're going to go to school for two weeks this fall and then they'll be back out. It'll, and it's already happened in, in Georgia at a school already. They were in for a week and a half and they're already out. And so um, this unfortunately is, a, is a, at least a short term reality. And our students deserve as good an education as anybody else in this county. And so that needs to be a big consideration. Uh, just so you know, I did communicate with, with uh, Commissioner Markley and thank her for including um, Mike on the commission. I think expressly I thought it's very important that we have a voice. And so I think we're making some progress. At least we had somebody at the table that we really very rarely have in the last however many centuries, years, decades, whatever. So, and I also would like to suggest a meeting with either at the council meeting or a subcommittee meet with uh, commissioners Walters and Burroughs and decide how we can get better representation from those two on our commission. That they can represent the areas that they that our interests to the county and to the unified government. Whether that's done in, in our in our um, council meeting format or whether it's done in a more of a, a personal subcommittee type of a setting. But I, I do think one of those things is start holding our elected officials accountable, just like we're held accountable, hold them accountable for representing our citizens at a level when there's this kind of money. And what was fascinating about this article is how many people in 10 days could come up to the trough. Right. That was unbelievable. <coughs> Dozens and dozens and dozens of organizations, and there's some two people organizations in there that that, that were able to come up. With. It's just unbelievable. Well, yeah. and there's there plenty out there, and it, everybody comes. Right? Unfortunately, it wasn't, and, and this was not a fault of UG. There wasn't a lot of guidance around this whole program from the federal, state, to the county. I mean, right? I mean, we were asking questions every time we met, and, and then you have to. Through the front. I mean, there was, I, I think, I mean, at the end, if we had the amount of information at the end we had at the beginning, the process probably would have been a lot easier. And, you know, from our standpoint, it may have fared better. But it was, there was such a, again, it wasn't a UG failure, it was just there was such a lack of information. As to your, your meeting, at least, uh, I mean, this is really the mayor and council. I think if, if we want to do something like that, I think personally it would be best to first maybe just have a, uh, you know, a meeting or wherever that's at. I think that meeting should you know, certainly include the mayor, probably the president of the council, and at least one council for that state to do. How do y'all want to do that? that that's up to you. Know, I agree. Staff is whatever happy they, to, whatever so, they feel most yeah. comfortable with doing. Staff's that. happy to try to make arrangements, but it, it, I think we would need direction from the council. Because this is just one committee that we should be represented on. Yeah. This is just one. Right. And and so there are others that affect our citizens that we need to have a voice. And that may be appropriate at the end when we do the council comment, hey, this is the Jedi to lay the Terrors Act and it's associated with it. Mayor, I'm 
Mike, would you be able to communicate with the superintendent of Bonner Edwardsville um, since the next package is focused on education right. and see if he would, since he only asked for $56,000 or that's all they're getting anyway. Um, Piper, when they asked for $380,000, they're getting 250 teacher lap laptops and 900 student Chromebooks. So it's very much about online learning and technology. Um, could you communicate with him and just ask him to put some in his funding perhaps to help us in our community so our students are able to access the internet and have technology to do so? I think that might be a way that we could um, get into that second. And the to the tune of about 5.6 million. <laughs> that That'd be helpful. I think, um, again, that's one of those areas where because of lack of guidance, was, so can we request reimbursements only? Can we request, I mean, there wasn't a lot of guidance. And I, I will say that, that our superintendent has been active on our calls and been oh, my gosh, yeah, active he in. He has been really. I think he shares some of the same, I'm going to say they share some of the exact same currency in the city council. Sound like the city got it figured out off the quick. Yeah. yeah the UG sure you know what I mean? The UG got it figured out. And just to, uh, on this thing and, and double check it, but it says the next phase of CARES Act funding will start to be taking applications on August 13th. Okay. So I know it's it coming out, but was it short exact time? I think that might only be for the economic and connectivity piece yeah, of it, too. Be. They've got it sectioned off. That could be. That could be. That's just space to it. So. Well, 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 yeah. I don't think cities will directly, whether, it's, whether we would even have an application the ability to file that page on behalf of the city. I think it's possible we could be a part of it somewhere along the way. But we'll, <laughs> I was trying to get through phase one, but we'll, we'll move right into phase two. So thank you. Thank you. Now I'm ready for the next okay. item, okay. Mayor. Yeah, you're, you're on. Okay. Uh, unless I assume I was taking this one and you're going to. Uh, so as you know, every year we come back before the city council. Uh, generally to adopt two document, two items, the Uniform Public Offense Code and the, and the SDO and the State Traffic Ordinance, which basically is what we use uh, for municipal type violations. And obviously they're uniform in nature, so cities adopt these and then they can have local amendments to them, but it, it gives some uh, standardization across the board and instead of us have to go adopt all these by separate ordinance, we adopt it as a whole. You will notice this year we're not asking for uh, an ordinance to approve the standard traffic ordinance because through the legislative session there were no changes that apply to the standard traffic ordinance. So no need to adopt a new ordinance because these stay in place until a new ordinance is passed. So we don't have to deal with that. Uh, under the Uniform Public Offense Code, uh, there are a number of changes. Uh, I, I uh, you know, I, we've been through all of these. Probably to, to summarize them, the first one has to deal with the uh, you know, tobacco products to a minor. We've effectively already adopted this by local ordinance, as you remember, under the uh, Smoking 21 or whatever that, that, that campaign is. This basically has been uh, solidified into for public offense code, so we'll just delete that section in our regular ordinance and adopt it. So there's effectively no change from what we already have, which it puts in here. The other items, as often as the case, uh, deal uh, around uh, firearms, and by, by firearms, we're, you know, we're talking about guns, those types of firearms, right? So we're not, we're not talking about some of the others that we have. So, uh, Really what's happened, uh, for the most part, is a number of sections they have by like the state statute, and some of this has been in place since 2015, that has really taken away our authority to cite these into the municipal court. Specifically the 10.2 and the 10.3. 10.2 basically said, if you were under the influence and have a firearm, you can be charged into the municipal court. And the other one has to do with criminal justice felon, so you can a firearm to a felon, or someone, or exchange them, you can also come into the municipal court. 
be, uh, if, and I always say this, uh, they are an attorney, right? We have an attorney, and as I've said a million times, I always go with the one that, that can stand with me at the courthouse. That's not the AG, and that's not the AG. No, well, they're both the department. They're taking a section that was uh, been in statute that effectively says that we can't pass uh, any law or, I thought it was the very first part of this, uh, that we couldn't pass any uh, law that I believe that it says requiring the, the requirement for fees, licenses, or permits for that sale of purchase, right? Which we don't. If you violate the law, you get, you get in the district court, you can be fined up to $1,000 unless it has that everything. And you can serve up to 179 days in jail. So effectively, what they've done is said, you can't hear these in, in the district court anymore. So if we have one of these violations, they're still stuck in the state statute. Well, but our officers, instead of filing the municipal court, will have to go through the process of filing with the district attorney and the district attorney will have to go the district So it doesn't mean that people under the influence can't still be charged if they have a firearm, or if you transfer a firearm to a felon, you can't be charged. It's just they no longer can be handled in the municipal court. Now, I personally don't know that I agree that the statute the same way that the league does and we can put all that back in if we want to but at the end of the day i think the chief and i spoke i'm not sure we've had any cases in the last two years of either one of the sections so it's not something that we deal with on a regular basis so why i i you know in the initial reading of this what do you mean so they can be drunk and have a gun and walk around and be crazy or you know have a mental illness or something but all that being said, uh, it's, it's, it's not that it's against the law, it's just no longer part of this court. Other than that, we're really not proposing any other changes. Uh, so all the things we already have on the books that are amendments that we've already had remain. And uh, we would just adopt the, uh, the, the uh, Unified Public Offense Code as presented Act and the ordinance. Mike, going back to the, right. so if it's listed on there, there's been changes, is that right? Right, so if you go so to the second, so the page right behind uh, the agenda item is a summary of the changes. So 5.7 was a change that basically it's now federal legislation about selling tobacco to minors, uh, the criminal use of weapons, uh, there's just a whole section of there that just, again, takes out uh, local ordinances on those. And so if you look at, we included for you uh, the current ordinances. I think we have 10.1. Okay. Yeah, the answer, so. uh, those were mainly laws that had changed at the state legislature. So we're, just, we're no longer able to regulate those provisions uh, under, under the Uniform Public Office. So has anything changed then? So what we're talking about um, are shoot zones? Or no. Okay, it's just listed on here? Well, because under, under the Uniform Public, uh, under the code, the amendments we make to it allow for shoot zone. If you adopted the Uniform Public Office Code without that amendment, then you would not be able, you could only discharge them within the confines of the building. You could not have a shoot zone, you could not discharge an air gun, an air rifle, a bow and arrow, a slingshot, BB gun, a baseball gun, except inside the confined space. So we are being more lenient by allowing those things to be discharged within a shoot zone. Without that in there, you couldn't discharge anywhere in the city, any of those things, except inside the building. There's another exception in there, barbed wire, which is, yeah. if you adopt the UPOC just as it is, it outlaws that. Yeah. We make the exception that you can have it. The barbed wire is not permitted inside any incorporated city limit in the state under the UPOC policy. We, we give an exception. There's some speed limit. 
difference is too, right? For yeah, that's under the SPO. That's a different. Oh, that's that's under standard traffic ordinance, and we're making no no change. There's no change to the SPO. So we effectively will continue to operate under the 2019 SPO, and we'll operate under the 2020 UPOC until the legislature session meets. And the next year, we'll probably be back with 2021 in both of those. So there are no changes to being able to hunt legally in areas in Edwardsville that you can currently hunt legally with a firearm. That's correct. Okay. Or both. Or both. Uh, yeah, or both. with both. So we added again uh, under for, under the 10.6b, right? Again, we've added language that allows both. If you didn't have these amendments, you could not do that. Okay. Like I had a motion to end. On 10.6C, it's the shoot zones, so the best thing to shoot zones shall be identified by the state. Um, but I yeah. don't see before that where it says you can operate those within a shoot zone. Say, I'm sorry. Like I see where it defines the shoot zone, but yeah. I don't see, and I, I'm skimming this really quick. I, I kind of wish we would have this before, and then change this before, but um, I mean, can you show me where it says that it is? allowed in the shoot zone, not just the shoot zone definition. Well, because we said, so do, do you have, I was looking for the original, the for, do you not have the original UPOC? The 2019? So, I mean, that's fine. So, uh, so right now, the way the statute says under 10.6 is, it would say all, it would say all, it would say the unlawful operation of air gun, da 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 or discharge of Within the city limits, uh, uh, it would be limited to the confines of a building or other structure. What we're saying is, you can be outside the confines of the structure as long as you're within the shoot zone. I I hear you. I just don't see it. You don't see the legislative well, plan. Yeah, that's what I'm going to. I'm going to not. Right. It doesn't address firearms right. at all, except for those are no firearms. Firearms is not the shoot. Except for you can't shoot recklessly in the city. That's all it says. Right, and that's a determination, not a. I mean, which I actually that that we need to get cleaned up because I'm not okay with that. We need to define. I mean, weapons. because somebody's um, determination of what reckless is may not be what the next person believes that is reckless. That's a statutory reckless is defined well, it, 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 it just not, um, well. I, I'm just saying, could I ask that question, what is reckless? It's not defined in here, but it's defined in statute, and I, I, mean, I know I, I pulled it up. I think it's in Chapter 25. The word reckless is in statute. It's defined, and, and I think as Mr. Stites paraphrasing right reckless is doing things that would be out somewhat outside what a normal person would expect to be safe and normal operation i think we're the other well so before we move on to that let's stick with uh so on so first of all firearms and all these other things are separate so firearms practically deals with Guns, right? Um, broad, right? Pistols, rifles, shotguns, those are firearms. These things over here, which is a type of firearm, right? but they're segmented out, being bows, right? I mean, not from a legal sense, right? But bows and paint guns, all that, they're separate. They're, they're just, for the purposes of in the in the UPOC, they're separate. So you, it, it doesn't necessarily make sense, but in the UPOC, if you don't make the amendments that we suggest in there, then it would read the unlawful operation of an air gun, air rifle, bow and arrow, slingshot, BB gun, or paintball uh, is the shooting, discharging, or operating of any air gun da, 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 within the city limits, except within the confines of a building or other structure from which the projectiles cannot escape. If you shoot outside that building, you would be in violation of a class C district. Right, that's why I wanted to see in here where it says just, I mean, I understand the firearms are separate and we can and should address that. But um, I was wondering in here where it says, I see where it defines shoot zone, but where does it say that except for in the shoot zone? It's 
in 10, 6A, if you go through there, it says towards the bottom, it's um, within the city except within designated shoes. Right. Right. That's what I'm Or within for. the concept of yeah. Because right. yeah. the original okay. one would just say within the confines of the building. We're adding the language within the designated shoes. So it's part of the building. Yeah. 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 And so technically, our rules on air rifles, paintball guns, slingshots are more restrictive than our firearms. So that allows it. So the, the other section that they reference, which we're not proposing any amendments, is the Unified Public Office Code that says basically the unlawful discharge of a firearm is the reckless discharge of a firearm within or into the corporate limits of any city. And then it says it doesn't apply to the following things. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to summarize it. Most of these were adopted four or five years ago by, by the legislature. They made a whole kind of rewrite. So you have a right to defend yourself, right? yourself or another person or one's own property. So when it comes on your property, you have a right to defend yourself. Right? Uh, you can discharge it at a private or public shooting range, which we don't have any of those in the city. We can actually sell you. Who, does, who doesn't have any of those? There are no public or private shooting range. I have a private shooting range at my house. Uh, not unless it's zoned for second. Well, I mean, I mean, so tell zone. me why I don't. You know yes. what I mean? And, and yeah. I, I mean, who who's authorized? I mean, so if there is, if you're shooting it in a safe area, right? I mean, let's let's get past whether it's right right. or not. Right. Yeah. So, you know, you're shooting in a in a, right. in a safe area that everybody would agree is a safe area. Right. And you're shooting a 22 or whatever. You don't have to say anything. Right. At, a, at a, a target, right? Why is that not my private shooting range? Well, and I probably, but but private range is a place where people can come and make no, it's, no, it's, no, private. It's, no, that's right, but the in the public, uh, yeah, a public or private. I'm private. But right, private but you're property. not a private business of a shooting. It doesn't. Range. It doesn't say a private business. I think that's what they're yeah. meaning. I think from a zoning standpoint, you right. Yeah. So.